One man's trash is another man's treasure. When I was just a little kid, my grandmother used to take me to the city dump to hunt for treasure. Since then, I've always enjoyed taking things others see as useless and making something new and useful out of it. Today's project is made almost entirely from recycled materials, some free and some super cheap. The frame and hardware is built from old cross timbers disassembled from upgraded power poles. The solar panels are clearance scratch and dent panels from solar clear out. The firewood holders are recycled IBC totes. Even the firewood is reclaimed from beetle kill ash. Welcome back to Projects with Everyday Dave. It's time to upcycle some trash into something useful. When you're working with recycled products, you've got to make the design fit the materials you have on hand. So what I have here is quite a few eight footers and a couple of 16 footers. And I made a CAD model to try and figure out how to make these all lay out the way I need them to. These beams are about four and a half inches tall and three and a half inches wide, which makes them a little bit bigger than a four x four, but even on edge, that doesn't make a really great load bearing beam. I could stack two on top of each other and tie them together and that would make a great beam. It'd be about a four by 10. However, that uses a lot of my material. So using the beam load deflection calculator online, I determined that if I did four, in parallel, that would give me a good floor to carry all of my totes and it would meet the deflection requirements at an eight foot span. So I'm going to put in two screws every eight feet for my 24 feet. Each screw can carry 5,000 pounds, so that will be plenty. The entire rack will hold about three cords and green 4,000 pounds per cord will have plenty of capacity to carry those. Then the other big part is having sufficient strength on the backside to carry all the solar panels. Now, I don't like digging holes and pouring concrete and setting beams. And for my solar rack, I used a screw. And I found this screw that can be used for decks on Amazon. It's made, this particular one's made by Pilex. I don't have any affiliation with them. You can get different lengths. Each one can carry 5,000 pounds. And you can simply screw them in with a two by four. You don't have to have any special equipment. Now, since I'm not building a deck, I thought it was a good opportunity to try these out and see if they work well for me. If the wood rack tilts a little bit, I can make an adjustment. They have a, a nut. You can uh, adjust the height on the screw if I need to raise or lower it. And if my wood rack settles or shifts a little bit, nobody's gonna die. So good chance to try these out. All right, I'm gonna start with the corner post and then I'll use my string line and, and laser to set everything. This is the high point. So this is our first shot at it. We'll get it started and see if I can screw it in. The top has a square bracket. If you take the nut off, it slides down onto the square receiving portion of the screw. And then I can put my double-sided level on here. Get it fairly close and get started. I'm gonna push down while you do it. There we go, starting to turn in. Going slowly. It's not like with the tractor where it can put some weight on it. Now I'm getting dizzy, hang on. <laughs> there we go, I'm getting, here, let me just use this like a T-bar. That way I can push down on it. It helps to push down a little bit as I go till the screw gets far enough in to start grabbing the soil. For the other end, because the ground slopes away, I went ahead and got the longer screw. I wish there was one a little bit in between these two. This might be a chore to shove this thing in the ground, but you know, you could get whatever length you need. They even have extensions if you need to go really deep. So let's do the other corner and then I can run a string and put the middle two right in line with them. Now I can just set up the laser and I'll make sure that the set point, our first post, is exactly the same height that we screw this one down to and then we'll use a string line to set the middle ones. It's exactly right. Well, it's a good thing you didn't go down any further. That is it right there. All right, I wrap my string right around the center line of this first post. Now I can run that to the post we just put in. Okay, now we can measure out to where our center posts go. From the first post in, I'm gonna go to, from the outside of the first beam to the center of the next one. So this flag will be right at eight feet. Put a post right there, and then we'll go center to center for the next one, which will be at 16 feet right here. Get it right on the string. Not all of the posts went in smoothly. A couple of them seemed to hit some harder soil and I had to put some extra weight on it to get the screw to actually go down into the soil. I ended up using the tractor with a little bit of load in the bucket or me standing on it to get enough downforce to actually get the screw into the ground. Because this structure is very long and very narrow, it's not as accurate to triangulate from corner to corner. So I have an eight foot straight edge here, then a square against my level from the center of my post. Then I can just measure back the right amount and I planted a flag where I'm gonna put this back corner post. And then when I set the other one, I'll do the same thing and measure the full length and make sure that it's coming out right. And I'll double check by triangulating from corner to corner. Then we'll run a string line across the back edge and put the center two posts on the string line. Hey. That's it right there. We're getting good at this yeah. now that we're done.
All right, now that the screws are in the ground, I can put the nut back on. I could position this halfway up so that I could have some significant up and down movement, but in my case, I'm trying to keep it as low as possible. And I used the laser to set the top of the post. They were all within a quarter of an inch. So I'm only gonna give myself about half an inch of downward movement and the rest will all be up. You know, if the posts sink, I can move the nut down and raise things up. That's the most likely scenario. So let's drop them in. Because of my strategic layout, I only had to cut two beams in half for the bottom cords and angle cut the four braces. Basically, zero waste for my beams. To minimize the cost of assembly, I'm going to use nuts and bolts and brackets, lag bolts and things that I've salvaged from the power poles and other pallets and projects that I've disassembled over the years. My goal is to not spend any money on hardware on this project. Now, I'm sure inevitably I'll have to buy a screw or a nut or a bolt somewhere, but I think I can get pretty close with just the stuff I've salvaged over the years. All right, I got all the beams laid out and positioned. Now I'm just gonna lag bolt them together. All right, I'm just gonna reuse some of the hardware from the telephone poles to bolt my uprights together. I need them to be super strong because I'm cantilevering the entire roof out off of jack so I can change the angle. These verticals in the rear have to be super strong. All right. Put that L bracket in there. Yeah, and then our X bracing, this is gonna be good. I love it! Whenever possible, I'm using the existing holes in the posts. If that doesn't work with the layout, I'm drilling new ones with a long auger. I'm using through bolts with large washers in opposite directions and adding additional L brackets wherever needed to secure the uprights. Woo, I love it! Nothing like giant bolts to hold massive beams together. This thing is gonna be awesome. Speaking of awesome, my solar panels just showed up and they are packaged beautifully. Can't wait to get these things up. I just love this recycling theme. Taking what other people don't want and making something useful out of it, it is so much fun. I've got these arm braces and they will work perfectly to hold these uprights perfectly plumb while I construct the remaining portion of the roof support. There's already a pre-drilled hole in the beam right where I need it. Perfect. I love it when a plane comes together. Eight foot four by five angle braces. Might be a bit overkill, but that's the material I have to work with. And I'm rarely against overkill. A through bolt at the bottom and a heavy duty lag bolt at the top makes for an incredibly rigid structure. The only thing lacking is some lateral support. And later I'll add these diagonal braces to improve the lateral stiffness. A friend of mine gave me a couple scraps of galvanized angle iron and I'm using those for the center mounts. And I'm using short sections cut from the heavy gauge inch and five eighths galvanized unistrut that I'm using for the east-west purlins for the end brackets. I know that this galvanized strut can span at least nine feet because that's what I'm using on my main array that was engineered for 90 plus mile an hour winds. To make the array tiltable for the seasons and for easier access to the wood, I'm using jacks from Sinclair Racking. Sinclair is the racking system a friend of mine used for his 60 kilowatt array at his house. The Sinclair system is fantastic. It's one of only two racking systems that I currently recommend on my website. I don't get anything if you use them. I have no affiliation with them, but it's a really great system. I really like their jacks. They're very strong and easy to use. So I asked them if they would support me for this build with a few jacks. They were happy to do so and said they have so many requests for them that they plan to start selling them on the DIY market. When they become available, I'll link to them in the description. One jack could lift this whole array, but my Unistrut purlins aren't strong enough for that span. So I'm using four jacks, mainly just to support the Unistrut. All right, help us. Put that in your video. <laughs> Attaching the inch and five eighths Unistrut purlins was pretty easy once all the jacks and support braces were mounted. These guys from Solar Clear Out make a nice crate. I'm really curious to see what these Denson Benz panels look like. Save that for a future project. <laughs> wow. That is really nice. I don't know if you can see in there. That is the nicest packing job I have ever seen. Look at this. There's foam on the sides and bolted blocks to hold it in place. The outside is completely enclosed and framed in. Almost every shipment of solar panels I get, at least one panel is damaged by a forklift or something somewhere. If everybody packed their panels like this, I probably wouldn't have that problem. Well, where's the scratches and dents and bents, right? I'll probably have to take them out to find it. There's a little bit of a scratch on the glass there. Maybe that's it. I don't know if you can even see that in the camera. There's just this a little scratch. That's not gonna affect performance any. Well, if the first one's any indication, this is a score. Wow, 
Those are beautiful panels. This is gonna look great. The most important step in installing solar panels is to get the first panel set square to the rack. If you put the second panel on and it's headed up or downhill, go back and adjust the first one before you continue. You know you're blessed in life when your wife is willing to help you install solar panels on a giant contraption in the front yard she would rather didn't exist in the first place. For a short array like this one, a straight edge will work as a guide to set each subsequent panel. For a longer array, you may want to set the final panel and use a string line as a guide. The ability to tilt the surface down makes it much easier to do the installation. In the spirit of recycling, I got a few of these IBC totes from a local mulch company. They had some food grade dye in them. It'd be great for this project. You just have to remove these rods, pull the bladder out, and then we'll cut an opening in it, and I'll be able to load all my firewood in it. And then I can forklift it in and out of my storage space and move it around without having to move individual pieces of firewood. And these grids will help hold it in place so I don't have to put any additional structure in my wood storage area to contain the wood. So let's get to it. I'm trying to decide if I want to balance structure or accessibility. I think I'm just gonna cut this block off. I can always make it bigger. All right, that seems pretty good. I can get in there pretty well, but there's some sharp edges here. I need to find a solution to manage. I wouldn't want someone to be grabbing some wood and come back and cut themselves on one of these sharp edges. So I need to find a way to cover those. Well, there we go, our fast, easy firewood storage bin. Now, all I gotta do is fill it with some firewood and try it out this winter. Fortunately, I never throw anything away, so I have some scraps of polypropylene pipe from my geothermal installation, and I think I can just split it down the middle, put it over the edge, and that'll protect anyone from getting cut by the sharp edges on the steel. Now we'll see if that works. All right, it seemed like Past Dave had a great idea there, but that was way too much work for what I accomplished. So one of you must have a much better idea, and you can let me know in the comments of how to protect people from these sharp edges, because the way I did it was just way too much work. But safer now. Splitting the wood and tossing it directly into the tote was very convenient. I could then lift them directly into the truck or the trailer. We hauled and stacked some wood in the traditional method, stacking it into the trailer and then from the trailer to the wood stack. It seemed painfully slow when the rest of the wood could just be lifted off the truck or trailer and set neatly onto the rack. I would say the spacing for the totes was a bit tight and I could have used a few more inches to play with. All that being said, I'm super happy with the result. It's less than 10 degrees Fahrenheit this morning. I got this rack built and stocked just in time for winter weather. Unfortunately, I have to deal with a problem that Past Dave created for me. I originally intended to order 50 inch screws, but accidentally ordered 32 inch screws. Instead of returning them and ordering the right ones, Past Dave decided to take a risk and just order longer screws for the end where the hill drops off and use the shorter ones everywhere else. Well, within hours, of placing several thousand pounds of wood on the rack, the screws started sinking unevenly. You can see from the level that I have attached to the frame, we have several inches of drop back at the corner. Since this small hill is only five-year-old backfill, I know the civil engineers out there are laughing at me right now. You saw this coming, didn't you? After the first few hours, it seems to have stabilized. It hasn't moved any for several days now. Fortunately, these screws have some adjustment ability, about three inches. So I'll make an adjustment and try and get it as close to level as I can and see how it adjusts over time. Hopefully it stabilizes out and future Dave doesn't have to make a more drastic countermeasure. <sighs> All right. Well, I made some progress here. It's come up with some, but the more I raise it, the more the screw is sinking. So I have a bigger problem on my hands. I'm gonna have to put some material under this and, and shim it up against the ground until I can come up with a better solution. This particular corner for some reason just must have been in a really soft spot and I needed a longer screw. Thanks, Past Dave. I went back and looked at the footage of loading the wood and you can see the backside sink as the wood was being loaded. I think the screws at the edge of the driveway didn't sink because the soil was much more compacted there. This was entirely the result of short screws in soft backfill. Swapping back and forth between the before and after image, it's easy to see the shift in the racking. If I had returned the short screws and ordered all long screws as I originally planned, I wouldn't have had this problem at all. All the rain's gonna hit these panels and drop right down in front of them. And I have some grass here at the end of the gravel that's probably gonna get soft and muddy. And I don't wanna be stepping in mud when I go up to get wood out of my wood rack. 
So to solve that, I'm gonna put some wheat block down and a little gravel on it, and that'll protect the path up to the wood. You can't just go to one of the big box stores and get some landscape fabric from the garden center. That stuff isn't strong enough for this kind of application. Vivor has a great price on some really heavy duty fabric that you can use under driveways and things like that. And I'm gonna use that for this area in front. And I could put it under the entire thing, but I'm having some trouble with the foundation and I don't wanna to have to tear it all back up when if I have to fix that. So for now, I'm just gonna put it right up under the front. There, that really cleans it up, and now I have nice, clean access to my wood. Now that all the panels are installed, I've had a chance to evaluate the damage a little bit closer. Most of the panels just had a scratch on the glass, or a dent in the aluminum frame, which is not an issue at all. A couple of panels had been hit in the corner hard enough that the glass was coming through the aluminum. I'm amazed the glass didn't break. It would probably be a good idea to add a little silicone over that spot to make sure that no moisture can penetrate through the seal. I ordered one extra panel, which I always do now to prevent problems for future Dave. And it was a good thing I did in this case. One panel I had, the frame was hit hard enough to pull the aluminum away from the glass in a section. The performance wouldn't be affected, but the seal is broken and I would need to add some extra sealant to keep it watertight. I saved this panel for a future project so I can take the time to repair it. For this type of project, these clearance panels were a great choice. Thanks to Solar Clear Out for supporting this build. I really like what they're doing to give people a great price on products that might have gone to the landfill otherwise. Check out their website using my affiliate link in the description. It helps out my channel at no cost to you. You might be wondering if this is really going to protect the wood from the weather. It's high up and there's gaps between the panels. The reality is it's working even better than I thought. The height of the panels allows the sun to hit the wood and dry them out from the small amount of rain that actually does make it through the cracks or around the edges. I considered mounting the panels right next to each other with silicone. However, my experience with thermal expansion tells me that that would likely be a problem for future Dave. Aluminum expands much more than glass. As the panels warm up, the ends of the frames expand and they need to go somewhere. When mounted properly, there's a space in the gap for the aluminum to expand and contract. Using the coefficient of thermal expansion for aluminum and the change in temperature I would expect to see here in Ohio, over the 25 foot length, the change in length would be almost half an inch. Now, the steel it's mounted to would also expand about a quarter of an inch, so maybe the quarter inch delta is manageable, but I don't want to take the risk of breaking the glass or breaking the seal between the panels and the glass. Also, it would make it very difficult to disassemble if I want to change the panels later. I did purchase some foam to squeeze into the cracks, but it just hasn't been necessary. The gaps are only about 1% of the total area. And because of the ridge on the panels, rain doesn't roll over the edge. It comes straight down the panels and drops off the end. Well, my three kilowatt rack is finished and ready to wire, but it turns out that is too much to squeeze into one video. So I'm gonna save all the wiring and performance testing to part two. Be sure to hit the subscribe and notification bell so you don't miss it. When it's done, I'll link to it right here. And in the meantime, you can see the Victron install for my home backup system that's currently running running all of my emergency systems from this solar array. And you can see the real-time performance of these panels on my website, projectswithdave.com, through the portal. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.